coach as an assistant, you you took over in the yeah. interim in a couple of different situations, but yeah. one was in Golden State, uh, yeah. where did you coach? Uh, you you help increase their wins to about ten games, but You're still right. got let go in the end. Was that was was Steph Curry there at that time? Yeah, yeah, Steph was was a rookie. Uh, yeah, well, did you see rookie. the explosion there. coming? Yeah, I tell you what, Don Nelson. I worked for Don Nelson, a Hall of Fame coach. Worked for him for five years, six years, and um, and this was a genius. He's like mm-hmm. Coach Knight. You know, I worked for, play for one guy, Hall of Fame coach, and another guy, all time winning coach, and um, you know, in, in the pros, Hall of Fame coach. They just see things that's different from anywhere. And mm-hmm. so I never forget in our preparation meetings, uh, getting ready for the draft, and. He said, because Coach Knight said the same thing about Steph Curry when he was doing some stuff for ESPN. He said, mm-hmm. he's the best passer I've ever seen. He's the best passer I've ever seen. And we wow. already know shooting. Mm-hmm. And so we were in our meetings, and Don Nelson just simply said, he said, uh, he said, this guy, he said, this is our guy. He, he's a franchise player, wow. someone that you want to lead your franchise. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to look at it. I'm seeing this little <laughs> right. kid. I'm like, what do you see? He said, just watch the game. Watch him play. One, there's no structure of frustration on his face. Mm-hmm. Move under control in, in chaos. Look at the passes he's willing to take, the chances mm-hmm. of that he would make. Mm-hmm. Then look at the fact that he's making these passes with his left hand. So we had a, a video a breakdown for him on all of his left-handed passes. Wow. And they were on point, you know. And so then you started to see. So I never forget a good friend of mine worked for the uh worked for, for New York at the time. And uh he was, you know, during that time, people were always calling around, hey, who are you guys like? Who do you like? Who do you like? And he kind of I, you know, we didn't talk about who we liked, we just talked about other people, you know, because uh, we knew who we who we wanted. And uh and he's like, We we have a point guard here in Monte Ellis, so mm-hmm. we're not going to draft a point guard. You know, right. that's what, boom, you know, and I never forget him. They were picking behind us. And when we got up, the, the understanding was that they're probably going to go for a big power forward, uh, someone like that. And so at that time, I think they knew that they wanted to get that player behind us, uh, behind our draft pick. And when we drafted uh, Steph Curry, my buddy told me, he said, you could if you could have seen our war room, <laughs> because <laughs> they wanted that guy, you know, but You're we right, got him. And when we came into summer league, he's played in summer league and uh, played very well during that time um, and had a good year. Had he scored 20 points that, that, that season, you know, and then I had him that next year, Don Nelson, uh, you know, was trying to promote me to become a head coach in the NBA. Uh-huh. And I took over the team that next year and uh, eventually, uh, you know, improved the team by, you know, by 10 games and was on my way to thinking that, okay, I have a chance to be a head coach in the NBA, but obviously, mm-hmm. you know, ownership, new ownership came in, wanted their own people, which understandable, All right, you know, but, uh, but I was able to watch Steph and he still averaged uh, right at 20 points for me. Uh, and he had all kinds of issues with his ankles early yeah, on. His, yeah. I remember that mm-hmm. constantly getting uh, ankle sprains and things like that, but still managed to do it. And, but you saw a, a player that could be really good Absolutely. and have a chance to be an all-star, but not a superstar. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know he was going to come in and just completely change yeah, the way it. the game is played. Yeah. Got guys shooting from half court because of him. <laughs> I, I would just, I would say that, that he got another guy named Anthony Morrow and another player what. Reggie Williams. Mm-hmm. Uh, they would be at shooting at practice. When I saw the, the clip a couple of days ago about Steph making 105 threes in a row, I was like, mm-hmm. "That's nothing." I've seen him do that before, you know. Right? Yeah, for and, sure. Um, but they would get out there and start shooting, and the and they would start shooting from deep. You know, because these are some elite shooters. And I said that this kid here shoots the ball with ease. He shoots a jump shot from half court, you know, stand still free throw. It's a free throw. How you can shoot it, you know, and uh, you just saw the range on it. So yeah. when you start seeing you know, all these long shots that he's taking, everybody, like, oh, my goodness, look how far back from the three-point line. I was like, man, I would see this in practice with him and Anthony Morrow shooting these shots like this, you know. I mean, they're on one court and decide that. I'm going to shoot from this three-point line on <laughs> right. the other. Right, and exactly. Take shots, you know. And I said, man, you can't – Reggie Williams, the new guy we had brought up from the CBA, I said, man, look, you can't shoot with those guys. If you can't make 55 in a row, you can't even get in the game with them. <laughs> you can't get in the game. <laughs> but you knew his greatness was there. You knew his personality, his family background. Yeah. Everything. He was one of these kids, obviously, his dad played in the NBA. He wasn't one of those kids that was uh, – my dad played here, and I got this – 
he had a he had a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. I got to prove people that I can do this on my own. 